Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be covering basic color correction for environmental portraits. Now, in the last tutorial we basically did uh, color correction for basic portraits and kind of in my mind I classify the two. If it's a portrait, the subject is very large in frame. Um, what's important in those kind of images is, is really smoothing out the skin tones, getting skin tones the exact right color, um, and kind of making the image more flattering because the subject is so large in frame. We don't necessarily want to see every bit of facial detail. An environmental portrait, on the other hand, is basically a, a portrait of a subject in their environment. So it's going to be more of a wide shot, and it's going to be pulled back, um, and they're going to be a little bit easier to edit because you don't have to worry so much about skin tones and things like that. It's, it allows a little bit more leeway, and then you can actually have, uh, it allows a little more room for artistic editing as well, um, and we'll get to that eventually, but we're going to focus just on basic color correction in this tutorial. So let's go to our environmental portraits, and what we're going to do, just like we did in the last tutorial, is we're going to take our keyword, because we're working on it second, we're going to rename it. It's going to become 02 Environmental Portraits. I'm going to hit Edit, and there we go. And then we're going to right click, or not right click, we're going to left click on this little arrow on the right side of uh, the keyword to bring up the filter. Alright, so now we're filtering by the keyword, and this is what you should see. If you don't see this, you probably need to go back through the uh, introductory video in this chapter where we show you guys uh, how to set up the catalog and keyword everything. So let's go to our very first, uh, our very first image by hitting D to jump us to our develop module. And this is one of the two images that we have in the catalog that are actually JPEG images. So you'll notice that they're going to be a little bit harder to work with, um, but that's fine. It'll still work for all of our purposes. And basically this is a shot of just one of these shop owners out in Canton, China. I was out there visiting, and I thought it was a very typical uh, kind of just expression and pose. He was just sitting there, and I thought it was really typical of kind of how these shop owners work in China, where they just sit next to their shop and basically just wait for people to come in. Either that, or they come and just kind of accost you and, and, and pull you into their store. But uh, he's one of the more chill guys, so... I got him here chillaxing, so let's do the first thing first, which is start with our largest adjustments first and move on from there. So the largest adjustment is clearly the overall brightness and exposure. Now I notice that this area of the street is already really bright, um, but his skin tones aren't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my brightness to a point where basically I, I feel like it's uh, where my street is kind of getting to the point where it's a little bit too bright. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little trick with the vignetting. Because my edges are too dark, I'm going to go down to my uh, just the, the basic lens vignetting, not the uh, not the post crop vignetting, just the standard, and we're going to pull it up. I'm going to go up to actually 100, and then we're going to pull this in, and then we'll adjust from there. So I'm adjusting the midpoint in because I basically want this to uh, start from brightest at the edges and pull it in, so you don't notice this really noticeable bright vignette around the outside. I want it to be a very subtle graduation, and then I'm going to pull down the amount just a tiny bit. All right, now I'm going to go back up and we're going to adjust our recovery from here. So I notice that the street is too bright, so my recovery is going to help me pull down that street. And we'll go up to plus 80, and that's fine. And then we're going to, from here, adjust our temperature and tint. I'm going to zoom in just to get a little close up on him. I think he's a little bit on the green side on my screen, so I'm going to go a little bit up on the uh, tint, and then I'm going to pull the temperature down just a tiny bit, just to get it a little more neutral of tones. All right, now we're going to boost our clarity. Again, in these kind of pulled out environmental shots, I really want to be raising my clarity because I want to see more detail in the shot. Um, it's really more about the environment than it is about a close-up portrait, so I don't mind enhancing the detail. So I'm going to pull it up to about plus 50. If you go up too high, you're going to start notice fringing. So if you look right over here, and fringing typically occurs where uh, items appear over highlights in the background. So if I pull this up too high, you're going to start seeing those black edges appear along things. I, I kind of want to avoid that, so I'm going to leave it around plus 40, plus 50 is fine. And I'm going to bring my vibrance up a little bit. Now one thing I notice still is that this street area is still a little bit too bright for my taste. And so what I want to do is kind of pull out those, pull down those tones a little bit. And so we're going to use our graduated filters by hitting M or just by clicking on the menu right here. And we're going to create a new custom graduated filter and we'll save a preset for it. So what we're going to do is adjust exposure down. We'll go negative 0.66. That's fine. Um, and that's really good. That's really the only thing I want to adjust for this. Ex it's just going to be a burning down uh, gra graduated filter. So I'm going to save this effect by hitting on the menu, going to save current setting as a new preset. And we're going to call this basic burn. And now I have basic burn selected. I'm going to start from this left side and I'm going to click and hold shift so that it, it holds my uh, brush still. It holds it along the axis. So if I 
if I don't hold shift then you'll notice that it'll bend as I as I bring it in so I want to keep it still and and hold it right along the x-axis so it doesn't tilt at all and then once I get it to about where I want it I'm gonna adjust the actual exposure so I, I notice that's a little bit too dark so I'm just gonna bring it up to about 0.4 and I'd say that's pretty good let's see our before and after so here's our before and here's our after of this image we kind of balance all the tones it looks decent um, I can add a little bit of blacks. I think I forgot to add a little blacks to give it a little bit of pop. So I'm going to go two blacks and just a little bit of contrast. And let's go a little bit higher on the brightness after that. All right. Let me just zoom in real quick and make sure our sharpening is good. Uh, because this was a JPEG image, it's going to come out of camera just a little bit sharper than it would if it were raw. We're going to increase it still a little bit more. I think that's about right. 41.5 and about 40 on the detail. That's good. Let's check out our before and after again. Great. All right, so let's create a snapshot of our color corrected settings, and let's just call them color corrected from here on out. So we can go color corrected. All right, so let's go to our next image, and this is an image that Chris actually shot out in Peru. It's out in a little farming village out there while he was on vacation visiting a friend. Um, so what we're going to do with this is I noticed that the overall exposure is pretty good where it is, so I just want to kind of dial in the correct temperature, and it looks like temperature is actually pretty good too. Um, let's, I think it's a little bit on the warm side, so let's cool it down just a tiny bit. I think about right there is good. And then let's kind of adjust our blacks from there because it looks like they're blacks. The next thing that needs to go up. Get a little bit more contrast out of the image. And I do want to smooth out a little bit of the skin tone on his face um, just because there's a little bit of highlights there that I want to pull down. And then let's adjust, adjust the overall brightness just to brighten it up a little bit. I think as far as the vignetting goes, it's fine. Um, I might pull it out just a tiny bit and, and brighten up the edges and then bring the midpoint in just so it's a little bit more of a even tone across the entire image. And then we are going to bump our clarity one more time. And we'll go up to plus 40, that's fine. And I think we can also bump our vibrance as well. I think this is good right about here. Uh, for some of you, it might be a little bit too warm. I think this is about where I want it for my taste, but you guys can adjust to your own taste for basic color correction. So let's just adjust our sharpness and then add our snapshot. Let's see here, sharpening. I'm going to go just a little bit higher in this. I typically like my images pretty sharp, so it may be a little bit more than you guys like, but I think that's about good. 45, 1.2, and 30. So let's add this snapshot. Color corrected. Let's go to our next image. Kind of this you can kind of argue is more of a landscape than a than an environmental portrait since the subject's so small, but I still think it kind of qualifies as an environmental portrait since she is just kind of doing her job. And the first thing I notice in this scene, it's supposed to be a really kind of a dark, moody scene, but I notice that the highlights are a little bit too bright. So because I'm worried about the highlights, I'm going to pull down my exposure. I'm going to zoom in on her face basically to see where I get it about right. And I think, I think about 0.86, negative 0.86 is about where I want it, and then I'll adjust from there afterwards. And then from here, I'm going to adjust my blacks because I want it to be very kind of a little bit more of a, a moody shot and get some deeper blacks into it. Um, now we could do a lot of cool artistic stuff with this, like you could throw the temperature really high and it would still look actually really cool like if we threw it up here. Um, but let's just kind of focus on the on doing the basic in this one we'll get to the other stuff later on. Um, so blacks are good right there. I might increase the contrast just a tiny bit and then increase my clarity again because I do want to bring out more detail and then increase the vibrance just to kind of make it You'll notice that when we start doing more mood shots that bumping the vibrance is going to have a really nice effect overall. And uh, on this, I want to raise my recovery just a little bit because I want to pull back the brightness of her, that highlight right on her face from this little light right there. So I'm going to pull it up to plus 80, and then we can adjust up the overall image if we need to get a little more brightness. And again, because it's kind of a more movie shot and it's kind of more uh, focused on this subject that's really small in the frame, on this one I'm going to actually use my vignette to, uh, whoops, I actually deselected. Sorry. On this one, I'm going to actually use my vignetting to pull the focus into her. So I'm going to darken the edges. And I don't need to bring my midpoint in too much. If I bring my midpoint in, it's going to cover her up too much. So I want to keep it kind of further out. And that's great, right about there. Let me make sure my temperature is good. I think my temperature is right. We can do a little check if we want by hitting the white balance tool by hitting W, clicking on this back wall, which is a really close to neutral color. And it looks about right. I mean, uh, I have a little bit of greens on her, so I might pull a little bit of that out by raising my tint. But yeah, that's about right where you want it. So we're going to save this as color corrected. Our snapshots, let's check out the before and after. There's the before, here's the after, looking 
good. I think it might be a little bit dark still. That's fine. I'll raise it just a tiny bit. Oops, and let me zoom in and check my sharpness before I forget. There we go. All right. Needs a little bit of sharpening. I'm going to go to, because she's so small in the frame, it could use a little more sharpening than uh, than some of the other images. So I'm going to go to 65, 1.5, and 35, and that's great. I'm going to actually update this so you guys can see how to update it. Update with current settings, and we're good. Let's go to the next image. All right, so this is an image that I took out in New York when I was on vacation out there with Justin. Uh, it was actually kind of a business slash vacation. We saw these uh, these students protesting. I think it was an environmental protest where they're basically carrying oil on their oil-ridden clothes and everything up the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. It's really cool. So uh, let's go. The first thing I notice in this image is basically it's it's way too dark. So I want to really brighten it up. And uh, because I notice a lot of highlights in the sky, I'm going to brighten up with brightness as opposed to recovery. I'm sorry, as opposed to exposure because I don't want to kill my highlights even more. So I get it to about plus 100, and I think that's about right for her skin tones. And what we need to do is now balance out the image. Um, the next thing I notice is that the temperature is a bit off. So if I do a little white balance tool and I click on her clothes, it gets me way too warm. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Control-Z. If I set this to auto, it gets me too warm again. If I set this to daylight, it's not quite right. So it looks like this is one of those images where we just have to dial it in on our own. So let's just, uh, what I noticed from this image basically is that right now it's a little bit pink. So I'm going to lower my tint so I have more greens. And then also I need to raise up the uh, the temperature. I feel like it's a little bit too cold when it's down here. So I'm going to raise up the temperature a little bit. We'll add a little bit more pinks back into it. And I think we're good about there. And what we're going to do here is raise our recovery because we want to pull back the, the sky that we've kind of blown. So I'm going to raise recovery all the way to 100. And from here, let's kind of tweak our blacks. I don't want to go up too high in the black because her skin tones are darker. Raising my blacks is going to uh, really kill her skin tone. So I don't want to increase my blacks anymore, but I do want to increase a little bit of contrast. Just a plus 40 is good. And we're going to do a very subtle uh, darkening vignette to kind of pull in the, uh, the edges of the image because the ed edges are really bright right now. I want to kind of bring it in. So I'm just going to go negative 40 start and then let's pull down the midpoint. Again, I don't want it to be very noticeable, so I'm going to keep it around negative 40. And that's great. Let's go back up. Let's adjust our vibrance back up. That's good. And then what we're going to do on this is the same thing we did on that first image. I notice the highlight tones on this side are still too bright. So we're going to go back to that basic burn brush by hitting M or just by clicking the graduated filter on the toolbar. And then we're going to pull down from the side. And I don't want to hold shift this time because I don't want it to uh, I don't want it to constrain to the x-axis. I just want it to be able to free free drag it in from the left or from the right side. I want it to be diagonal because you're not going to really notice you're not going to really notice this graduated filter over like buildings and stuff so uh, or over this area on the right side so it has a really nice effect we don't need to drag it straight across we can kind of leave it diagonal and as long as it's subtle it won't be noticeable if it's not subtle if you have it like this uh, where it's a negative two then it's going to be very noticeable but at negative point six it's just going to kind of serve to darken the edges a little bit and uh, or just to darken this corner and show us a little bit of that blue in the sky again. And one thing I do want to do with that, let me go back to this brush again. I'm going to select it. I do want to raise my saturation just a little bit, just to, uh, sorry, I'm going to go and just click and drag with the mouse, just to give the sky a little bit more of a blue feel. And that's great. All right, let's check out our before and after. Here's the before. Here's the after. We're pretty good. If you notice that we're, I'm seeing a little bit of pinks on this. I'm going to raise my, uh, I'm going to lower my tint and then lower my temperature a little bit. And I think that's good right about there. Once again, I'm going to zoom in, just check out my sharpness. Uh, this image is pretty sharp. You can use it a little more. could always use a little more sharpening. All right. That's not really true, but in this case it is. So 55, 1, 5, and 35 is about right. Let's create our snapshot for this image. Color corrected. All right, guys. Great job. We have finished our environmental portraits. Let's move on to the next tutorial.